The B-Sides Nova 2020 stream will begin momentarily. High speed, low drag. That's about what we're about to experience here. Uh, so bear with me, please. They are gonna be recording this, so if you wanna play it back at half speed, that may help. <laughs> Now normally I would, um, I would stay around and answer questions, but I'm actually heading immediately from here to the airport because tomorrow morning I speak in uh, B-Side San Diego because it wasn't enough just to do one side at a time. But if you have questions in the end, this is my Twitter. Feel free to reach out to me. So we'll just put that out there early here. Plus I can always use more followers, right? How many here, just out of curiosity, how many here is this your first B-Sides? Okay, we got quite a few here. Uh, how about first B-Sides Nova? Okay, yeah. This is always a great event, it really is. These guys do a fantastic job of putting this together. If you all have ever been involved in an event like this, you know it is a very tricky thing with a lot of moving parts. Especially there's this little illness going around that's got everyone a little freaked out, right? I'm sure they had to deal with a bit of that. Let me know when we're ready to go, man. Yeah, we're good, Eric. We're good to go? All right, here we go. Like I said, folks, this is gonna be high speed, low drag. We're gonna talk about deep fakes, though. Uh, how many people here have experience with deep fakes already? Okay, I got a couple of hands here. All right, so we're gonna move into that. Uh, a little bit about me, yes, I'm old. Worked for the Army for about 10 years as a contractor. Uh, also uh, with ISC squared, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Been in a lot of different uh, fields. Uh, I've always been very passionate about the human element, which is what this deals with a lot. Uh, I work for No Before. We're out of Tampa, where it is, yes, much warmer than here. Um, I will tell you, we do uh, uh, security awareness training and simulated phishing. That's what we do. Uh, we deal with scams a lot, and that's really what the deep fakes are coming down to is the scam side of things. Um, so. That's enough about us. Uh, again, we're moving real fast here. We're going to talk about how I got started, progression to deep fakes, uh, potential impact, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, I will tell you, my background a lot, I did a lot in photography as well. So I do stock photography. I used to do um, sports events, mostly cycling or motorcycle racing, photography, things like that. I actually got into digital imaging when I was in the Navy, um, which got me into computers. One of the guys on my ship, I was on the USS America, he had an Amiga 500, if you all remember what those are. And he showed me this really cool thing where you could scan pictures in by taking this handheld scanner, clicking a button, and then you rolled the thing. Anyone here ever work with one of those, right? That is old school. That's how old I am, folks, okay? Um, it was a handheld scanner. But it got me really interested in computers, and that's kind of what drove into it. But I've been involved in digital imaging for a long time. It's what made deep fakes really kind of stand out to me. So how this all got started, well, this talk actually got started because a friend of mine, Javad Malik, he's in the UK, uh, he's one of my colleagues too, um, we got into things a little bit in our WhatsApp. And what we started doing was we started kind of uh, um, copying, pasting, photoshopping our conversations into something that was um, not what we had said at all. Okay, and it, uh, finally what we ended up doing, we achieved mutually assured destruction from an HR standpoint, uh, where we knew that uh, the things that we had made it look like each other said would probably ruin us both. Uh, but we realized in the course of doing that, how this could really be used against you. And that's what kind of spurred us into this talk about deep fakes and how it all kind of started and what, what it's going to now. So, progression of deep fakes, uh, this is Javad's chart. Starts shallow, goes deep, right top to bottom. And basically what this boils down to is you start looking at deep fakes when you start dealing with the AI stuff. Now, uh, simplicity reasons, you know, you start over here with the static stuff, move over to dynamic, right? So, shallow stuff, text manipulation, photo editing, doing your Photoshop, stuff like that, right? Coming on over here, anyone remember the jib jab style little videos? Right, okay, yeah, so around Christmas you paste somebody's face on that and they're dancing around as elves. Um, that's not really AI type stuff, but it is getting into dynamic sort of things. Uh, you get into the face swap stuff and puppetry over here. In the really deep stuff, this person does not exist. How many of you have seen those pictures uh, where the AI has actually generated humans, right? And some of those are pretty, 
Some of those are pretty creepy, right? But some of them actually look pretty realistic. That's kind of what we're talking about here across this spread. Now, image manipulation starts off with doing things like removing people from busy locations, um, tilt shift photos, force perspective. I'll show you some of that. This is image stacking in Photoshop. This is something I used to have to do. Basically, you go out here to one of the monuments, set up your camera, and you take a bunch of pictures over a short amount of time. And then as people move through there, you basically stack these images and take the people out, right? Now, Photoshop comes with this filter by default now, it comes with it. You just go, okay, and you take all those pictures and it does it all by itself. But basically what you can do is you can take something like this and remove people from that, which if you start thinking about that, you could now remove people from places that they might have been before, making people wonder if they're telling the truth, right? This is one of the things, but this is static stuff. It's pretty amazing to me that this kind of stuff has happened where it comes with Photoshop already. It's easy to do. Any of you do it, you click a script and you're done. Next step is tilt shift images. This is actually a drone shot. This is a real picture. This is designed to make real things look fake. They work well at like 45 degree angles. Basically, you blur out some of the stuff there and pop up your contrast and your color saturation. That looks very fake, doesn't it? But it's a real picture. So again, it's a type of manipulation that messes with you and you could do things like that as well. Um, how many of you have seen these? The Force Perspective, right? Biggest dog ever coming at you there. Um, this is all about angles and perspectives, right? We've seen it um, a while back. They, uh, they used to have the pictures of the guys holding out the camel spider, made it look like this giant, gigantic spider. But that's a perspective thing. By holding it away from you and the photo taken there, you're starting to change how things actually are. I do love the picture of the dog. That would be the biggest dog ever. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, again, this is all different ways to do some manipulation. This doesn't even involve digital manipulation. It's simply how the lenses bring in light and make things look. Now, FaceTime swaps and app filters. We're getting to the point that a lot of this stuff happens on our phones in fairly real time. And that's pretty amazing. If you think about what we're carrying in our back pockets these days and the sorts of things that are happening, it's pretty wild. We can add cat ears. How many of you remember the Age app, right? That was kind of spooky. Yes, all your information went to Russia, but whatever. Uh, face swapping apps, making animals talk. These things are all happening on our cell phones, which is pretty wild. So um, there can be problems with that. You guys see this? I think this was the uh, Pakistani prime minister. And another one just recently happened too, where they accidentally left on basically these funny over, it, this was a live broadcast though. Um, it's actually a really powerful technology to have on your phones. It's pretty amazing when we think about that. So, advocating for mice. What's that? Because he was advocating for mice. Advocating for mice, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you imagine, I mean, the poor person that's doing this, first of all, don't you look at your phone when you're like doing a live broadcast of like the prime minister or something? I would think that you'd look, but anyways. Um, my talking pet, how many of you have seen this? You can make the pet talk, right? So, um, you take a picture of a pet, you upload it there and now your pet speaks these words. And what's interesting is, you know, it moves the mouth and it actually, it, it moves the eyebrows, it moves the ears, it moves all kinds of stuff like that. Where, what kind of world did I grow up in that we didn't have this, right? This is some pretty amazing stuff here. Um, although, again, if you think about it, this is some pretty powerful stuff that we have in the palm of our hands when it comes to manipulating things like this. Um, when we get into video deepfake apps, this is where it gets kind of fun. So I've been doing this, I've been playing with this a little bit. I got a short clip we can look at here. Um, deepfake apps. This is where you're getting into things like replacing the face of one person with another. Okay, typically deepfake apps, they're gonna work on, uh, most of them are working on TensorFlow as a backend for the AI. Most of them are GPU centric. So you have to have a good graphics card in order to do this. Most of the time, NVIDIA is the graphics card of choice. I've done it both on AMD and NVIDIA sides. The NVIDIAs are more supported, although there are ways to do it off there. Basically, when you take a deepfake app, what it does is we all know that a video is a series of still photos, right? So 29.97 frames per second for NTSC, uh, basically about 30, 30 frames per second. And what it does is it extracts those out so they're separate. 
And then you use AI to go in and it's going to identify the faces, okay? So it's going to use algorithms, it's going to use its magic of AI, and it's going to find all these things. And it usually cuts out about 120 by 120 pixel square. Okay, so now what it's going to do is going to take that information. You got to do some manual cleanup on it. Um, but then what it's going to do is it's going to look for that and it's going to build a model based on what you have there. And then you can easily take it from another video where it basically does the same thing, extracting those. And now it merges these two through the AI and then replaces it on all those frames, and then it stitches it all back together, just like it was before. Now this is a lot of work, frankly, and it's something that if we were to do it manually, it is possible, but it's gonna take a lot of time. Okay, so that's the beauty of these apps, is they do it very, very quickly. Now, the limitations to deep fake video apps is they don't modify the audio. So typically speaking, if you want to make a really convincing one, what you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to turn around and have a voiceover actor. So when we've seen the fakes um, where they really try to fake everything and say different things, you need a voiceover actor. Otherwise, it's going to be the words that they're saying, but with a different face. Uh, the one I've used most is called Deep Face Lab. It's available here from GitHub. Um, there's Windows binaries downloadable for it, and basically, it's pretty easy to use. It's actually very easy to use. I'm gonna show you something I did right here. Hopefully it'll play. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's not much in the way of audio on this. I mean, you can hear them talk, but this is basically a before and after. So what I did is I took a, uh, a person from Spiceworks. Uh, his name is Justin Ong here. And I actually put Elon Musk's face on top, okay? And if you look at it, you, you can actually tell the differences, okay? It's somewhat subtle, and I found that this works better if the basic face shape is uh, the same and uh, if they don't have beards, <laughs> okay? I have had a hell of a time getting through beards or facial hair. It doesn't work quite as well. But you can see here, if you, what's that? I have to throw my beard back. Right, there you go. That's how you defeat this, folks. Um, but if you look here, it's actually replaced the mouth on both of these. The nose is different. The eyes are obviously different, but you still get eye blinks. You still get all that kind of stuff that makes it look like it's a human, okay? Now, to give you an idea of what this took, this took on my laptop, which does have a dedicated GPU, um, it's a gaming laptop, this took about 12 hours or so for the AI to learn this. I probably spent about another two hours or so taking it apart, full video clip ran, um, I think I ended up pulling about two, three minutes out of this. <laughs> so the fact is though, it doesn't take that much time. And I didn't do any customizing to this. This was just the basic out of the box settings when it came to this. And you know, it's pretty wild to see how well this works. I didn't really mean to restart that, but what the hell, right? <clears throat> so again, now, you're going to get blurs, you're going to get some things that are going to happen here, some artifacts here, and that's important later on. You'll see in his cheek it happens a couple times here. But overall, I mean, what do you guys think? For free software and about, you know, 12 hours or 14 hours worth of input, it's pretty amazing the things that you can do here. I've seen far, far worse out there. Free app, though, that's the, that's the interesting thing about this. Now, on the other side, there are audio deepfake apps as well. These are available on GitHub as well. Same thing, uses a GPU with TensorFlow on the back end in order to recreate or to create sounds based on learning from one sound. So you feed it, you know, 15, 30 seconds or so of somebody talking, and that's what it uses. Now when you speak through the software, it changes that. And I've seen it do um, accents, I've seen it do all kinds of stuff. Now I will say this, uh, at this moment, it sucks. <laughs> it's pretty easy to tell, okay? It really is. Um, but what's interesting to me on this is how much work they're doing to perfect this. So this is one right here. If you guys want to play around, again, free on GitHub. This is called real-time voice cloning. Uh, what's interesting about this is not a day goes by that I'm not getting alerts from GitHub about people posing questions, comments. It is a very, very active thing. Um, it's Python-based. Um, and it does help because it uses pre-trained models to help speed up the 
implementation. Um, again, I've heard some things out of this. It is still humanly recognizable in most cases that it's been modified. There's still that kind of synthetic weird sound that we get sometimes with uh, you know, voicemail systems or voice prompt systems. You can always kind of tell a little bit that it's been digitized. But I started playing with this six, seven months ago. Um, it has really, really improved how well it's doing just in that short amount of time. So it is something to keep an eye on. Again, what's amazing about this stuff is it's all free. So, potential impacts. Well, we know that all warfare is based on deception. What's a security conference without a Sun Tzu slide, right? Come on, we gotta have at least one gratuitous Sun Tzu slide in here. Um, it's a fairly new book, might have heard of it, Art of War, okay? Um, but it's true, it is true. And there is a lot of warfare going on here. Um, it, it's, you know, the attacks we're seeing, the, the breaches, we're seeing nation states, we're seeing organized crime, we're seeing all kinds of stuff involved in here. Um, business email compromise being a big one here. Um, I would like you to transfer a bunch of money, so on and so forth, I'm whatever. This is a prime case for this being used, right? What if you get that email and it's from the boss and it says, hey, I want you to transfer a million dollars. You pick up the phone, you call the number in there and it sounds like your boss, right? Yes, I'm confirming, quit bugging me, right? That's a prime use for something like this. And we tell people, pick up the phone, call them and get the answer. Well, this kind of defeats that as we move forward. Um, we have to understand the root of deception. Our brains, our brains actually apply filters to what we see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And I do whole talks on this. It fascinates me, the psychology behind this. But if you don't think your brain applies filters to things, when you're looking over here, if you look to the side, do you see your nose without looking for it? Like if you're not actually thinking about your nose, you don't see your nose in your line of vision. Why? Because your brain filters that out. Okay, the brain's an amazing thing. Uh, what color was the dress, right? Or the shoes, or all of those are your brain filtering certain things out and applying reality. Well, when you start tweaking the inputs to that through deep fakes, it becomes much easier now to trick people into doing certain things or seeing what they expect. So, video or fakes, uh, photo fakes, where can they be used? Romance scams. How many of you have heard of those? Any of you had anyone impacted by romance scams? Right? If you have, you know that you know this is somebody pretending to be someone else. Of course, they're always a doctor or a pilot or something crazy, right? Um, but what happens is um, you want to try to help these people by saying, have them do something, right? So if, you're, if, you're, if you have a loved one doing that, you say, have them hold up a coffee cup with their pinky sticking out, right? Or have them touch their nose and send you a picture or a video or something like that. Those are kind of proof of life sorts of things that we do. But with deep fakes, you would be able to have the person act that way and then place that other person, because a lot of times they go for celebrities, and now you place that person on them and have them doing the action, right? So we can actually make those things more realistic or more verifiable. Um, imagine outrage clickbait, okay? So you have a video out there that's like, you won't believe so-and-so did this. Now, I don't know if you all realize this in the area, um, but politics these days is a little bit, you know, tense, right? And uh, there may or may not be an election coming up, right? So what happens if you take something and you build a video that has a candidate saying something completely outlandish or outrageous a couple days before everyone's due to vote, right? You can actually cause some problems with that because now these people go out there and they, you know, they're going to vote. Eventually it's disproved, but by that time it may be too late. Okay? And that's one of the issues I think that we're going to be facing here. And this is actually pretty scary for me. I expect that we're going to see something like this happen near the election time. Okay? I really, really do. Um, the election influencing, like I said, it's already done. Also, you could, you could do this into the outrage sort of thing in the event that somebody says something outrageous and then you want someone to go sign a petition. And to sign this petition, they go online and they log in and they, you know, they tell you the name, address, social security number, 
numbers on the back of the credit card, right? But when people are outraged, the psychology behind that, um, the flood that we get helps bypass critical thinking. And people are just mad and they put in all kinds of information on things. This is an old trick by scammers to get people mad. And you can get stuff. So what do you do? You put up things like that that are unbelievable get them to do a petition. These are just a couple of ways that this sort of video or photo sort of fakes could be played in there. Now, this is another thing our brains do, and I see the looks in your eyes. Okay, I know what y'all are thinking. Y'all are looking at this picture going, yeah, he ain't wearing nothing, or she ain't wearing anything. This is our brain doing some conscious bias sorts of things, okay? By covering those areas, our brains actually turn around and they fill in the gaps and they make us believe something. If you saw this picture without that picture, you might think that they're not wearing anything under that, right? That's our brain working. Now, what this means is, our brain builds certain expectations for things. And when we expect to see things, you guys have probably heard about, if you're looking for a yellow car, you'll see a yellow car, that kind of stuff, right? Our brain is building in, building in these biases. Now, if I have you on the fence about something and you're already leaning towards that way a little bit, and now I give you some evidence, believe it or not, our mental states oftentimes will overlook things that should clearly be an indicator that it's not true because of the way that our brains work. Um, audio fakes, same thing with romance scams. You know, what, uh, um, what grandma doesn't want to get a voicemail from, uh, say, Fabio or Yanni saying they love you, right? In their voice, right? That's where some of these things could be used, certainly. Um, how about a fake phone call being intercepted on the election side, right? Well, we don't have the video, but we have this audio of so-and-so saying this about this, right? That's the kind of stuff that's going to be happening with this stuff. Now, interestingly enough, um, I just went to that little show out in San Francisco called RSA. If anyone was there, it was a madhouse as usual, right? Um, I saw a number of companies out there that were working in, in these fields trying to say that they're already looking at identifying deep fakes. And we're gonna talk about that just a little bit here in a second. Um, but how many of you remember this or saw this? Fraudsters used AI to mimic CEO's voice in an unusual cybercrime case. Anyone see this? It's supposed to be business email compromise where they got a call from the boss. Now, one of the places that I saw out in, um, in RSA, they were doing this thing where they did um, fraud for large scale uh, call centers, right? So they're detecting fraud. And they were all about like, oh, deep fake this, deep fake that. And I asked the guy, I said, all right, have you actually seen a case where deep fakes have been used for this? And he pointed to this. Now, the thing is, this was never proven to actually be a deep fake, not a voice actor. And I said, well, what about that? He said, well, there were some pauses in there that we think may have been. Now the fact is, I have not seen a single case where it's actually been fully identified that this happened. However, you got people at RSA setting up a big booth telling you that they're detecting this. He wasn't real happy with me as I'm pointing out that what they spent has big holes in it. But I mean, they had a deep fake video run in with Jennifer Lawrence and all kinds of stuff going on there. And I was like, look, this has not really happened. However, I promise you it is going to be happening. With as quickly as advancements are happening, even in the free stuff here, and there's some universities doing some pretty major stuff as well because they have the horsepower to do this, this stuff will be happening for real in the very near future. And we have to watch for this because this is gonna change the games, right? We know that uh, Facebook and Twitter have started taking a stance on this. So um, what we see with them is, for the most part, what I've been seeing is they will allow them to stay up, but they're going to mark them, right? So they will allow fakes to stay up. Now there's a fine line between doing a deep fake and doing creative editing and cutting and reconstructing of things. We've all seen those videos where it comes back and it sounds like somebody was saying something, it's taken out of context. So they have a big battle 
to fight between those. What do we do? What do we get rid of? So what they're doing is they're marking them now, saying that we believe that this is not real, but they are leaving them up. Um, we can detect them. Artifacts always remain. Um, in the videos, you can always see smoothing of the pixels around the face. That still happens. On the audio side, there are sounds that are made by the computer that we cannot physically transition from one sound to another. Um, the way the computer creates the waveform. So when you actually look at the waveform, it is impossible for our mouths to make that sound. You can ID some of that stuff here. Now the question is, at what scale and how quickly is that going to be happening? Okay, things like Twitter, things like Facebook, YouTube, they're gonna have things in place to look for digital manipulation. But a lot of places may not. And so we have to watch what we're looking at when it comes to that. On the audio side, is your organization gonna be able to deal with the CEO calling and saying transfer money, buy a bunch of gift cards or whatever? Very likely not for a while. And we're probably gonna be behind the gap on that from a security standpoint. Um, there will be automation with this. Um, and we will be pitting neural networks against neural networks that are creating these things to be able to spot this, which is gonna be interesting. That's when you know everything goes to hell and we all decide that we're gonna live in the matrix, right? Um, as we start having AI fighting AI, it'll be very interesting. Human bias issue, again, deep fakes are gonna enhance our prejudices and biases. If we already believe something and then we see something that confirms our previous beliefs, we are gonna be more likely to believe that. Whether or not there are signs, you don't need a high tech hope to manipulate people. Um, it just doesn't happen. The truth is out there as long as we care to look for it. And I know we're getting a little bit short on time here. He's looking at me going, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna skim through this. But what do you do to protect against this? Honestly and seriously, it's like any other social engineering. No, if you get that call, if people get that call, if they get an email, they get a text or something, they see something that elicits an emotional response. We need to be very careful about that and we need to try to confirm what's going on. That is a key there. There is almost always an, a, an emotional response that's being done through the types of attacks that this is going on. We have to do that. We have to pay attention to that. I am a big proponent of training people. My history comes around the people side. Like I've worked in DOD. I've worked in all kinds of ways throughout my career since the mid-1990s. I have seen people over and over again be the source of problems, right? We know that happens, okay? Um, we do need to train people. I'm not saying just because I'm with no before you have to use us, but teach them what to look for. Um, red flags in emails, red flags in text messages, things like that that are quick for them to identify and go, this is not cool, and they report it. That's really what you wanna do. Now, uh, of course you wanna train them on other stuff too. Don't use the same password everywhere, right? Duh. Okay, um, but here's the deal. People say you can't train people. I'm telling you, you can. Uh, we prove it all the time, uh, but you can train people and that's gonna be the defense against this. Again, if somebody gets something that really causes an emotional response, they need to be very, very careful with it and you need out of band ways to confirm things. So when you get that email, that is the, the boss or you get the CEO calling in that says, I need you to transfer a bunch of money, you need to have a process where you call them back on an out of bound number that's not in the email that they gave you or they told you or the phone number and you call them back on a known good out of bound way to confirm that, okay? Um, that's a very, very key part of this. We already have scammers that send emails that come in and end up saying, you know, they have a phone number down there. If you call that number, they're waiting to answer you. Yes, totally legit right? Um, we see that kind of activity already. So this is a way around that. Um, the policies and procedures and training people to be suspicious of this stuff is going to be key when it comes to this. So um, I wish I had more time for questions. This is my contact info. Please reach out to me at any time. Sorry this was so fast. Thank you though. I appreciate it.